One of the tributaries of the Johnston River flows through Paul and Mary Newland's property at Melanda. The creek supplies the town's water supply, so it is absolutely critical that they minimise off-farm impacts. Um, basically we milk 100 cows all year round. We carve right every month of the year the same amount. Uh, we're lucky here, we've got plenty of water on the Johnson catchment. This is not the Johnson itself, but it's a tributary of it. We've got a dam, we've got um, 80 acres of solid set irrigation, and that allows us to, uh, because it's hilly, um, these solid sets just allows us to have it day and night on irrigated fertilised feed. We don't get a lot of frost here, but this year was a bit different. But with the irrigation, the effects of the frost were pretty minimal. Um, we don't plant ryegrass, it's all under um, Neuroxa terrier. Um, we don't plant ryegrass, so in winter when the ceteria is a bit slower, we supplement with three kilos of whole cottonseed. Um, we've got our own milling set up over here that we do our home milling. We buy our grain locally. We buy lupins as our protein source. Um, my wife's brother grows our, our maize and I mix it myself. We feed about eight kilos of, of um, mixed ration um, every day and uh, in the well, winter three kilos of whole cotton seed. So we average probably 25 litres of cow pretty well all year round. Um, so probably a seven and a half thousand litre average. Um, our calves are all reared off farm. So we sort of only have um, mated heifers and dry cows on the farm. And I know it sounds like it's a lot of land, 400 acres, but um, we've got 60 acres of actual rainforest. Uh, so that knocks it back and the rest of the farm sort of has a lot of feed on it now since we had our heifers reared off farm. They're bigger, we carve them earlier um, and we've had excess to sell so we don't, so we don't lose them. Yep. So that's basically it. Just, um, this is what we got the money for from the reef rescue. Um, from behind us here, right through, right down to the spillway, just did about 50 metres down here. And it allowed us to to do it properly. We put concrete all the way down. Yep. Um, and because it's a high traffic area as far as like if we want to lime the paddocks, the fertiliser truck on the tractor come put the fertiliser on so we need it to be um, you know heavy duty. So we were able to reinforce the concrete right from right down here so the big trucks can go on it and um, yeah that bit extra money was just enough to to really do it properly and yep. it'll be here forever. Absolutely, yeah, because before we would just grab, you'd top dress it with gravel and then at the end of the wet season, all the gravel would be that far under and um, the next year you'd just have a mud pile and it'd all just wash into the creek. Um, and then now we don't have to do that. It's it's here, the, the wash into the creek's gone um, and like this here looks, um, you can see all the manure on the top here now. We'll just wash that, we'll scrape that up and um, every, every when you get a three weeks of dry, we just scrape it up and use it for the garden. So none of it goes into the creek anymore. That's the, the beauty of it. Yeah. Cows from the bottom into the, to Milken would take us probably 20 minutes just for that small area in the mud, and now it takes probably three minutes. So that's the that's the difference management-wise. Our central um, well, all the day paddocks are on this side, um, and if you look up the hill, you can see the central lane that's down, and so they come in here pretty well, um, three out of four milkins, they are traveling on this here. The other one is out that way. Uh, and they go down here, up there, and the second lot of money we got was to do the lane down the hill, down to the creek, and we've, you know, that's been just as good as this. It's only gravel, but it's still, that bit extra money has allowed us to sort of form it up properly, um, put drains into the paddock, so when we get heavy storms, um, all the runoff goes into our paddocks and not down into the creek. The power of the Daring Better and Better program is that it has a continuous improvement cycle built into it. So farmers can not just improve one practice, they can continue on to the next priority practice. And the power of the Daring Better and Better program allows them to do that and to share their learnings with other farmers through the discussion groups. So after, after we finished the dairy sap process, it was highlighted on, on Paul and Mary's farm that their um, nutrient reuse and their affluent system was not up to current standard and therefore the funds were available that they could improve their system. So we wrote the grant out and they were approved. 
Well, previously, that they used to use a contractor to, to um, remove the effluent from the pond and spread it over a, a part of the farm. Now with the, the grant, they've uh, put in a permanent system where they can reuse this nutrient over a larger area and therefore manage their effluent pond to a manageable level during the wet season. Well, yeah, without QDO and without Ruth um, in particular, um, we wouldn't have it. You know, they, we need them because they're a voice that sort of gives us all an opportunity. If we've got, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure other farmers have got similar situations to me, and uh, at least they coordinate it. And if 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 there's a pool of money, um, people with the neediest or the the most urgent one um, should have access to it, and it gives us all a chance to improve our our farms um, with the help of our industry and with the government funding. It's without it, we wouldn't be doing this.